Hello, hello. Now that we kind of understand how the clumps are generated and how the clumps are based, we're going to read what's the, the structure behind the clumps it itself. So we have the clump that it's the union of different strands, right? But this behavior is shared to inside of the same clump. So we normally have what we call two levels, the big clumps and the small clumps. But what are the small clumps? If we keep the same train of thought of having a small little force that is the one that attracts the hair on different levels towards uh, the force line, the small clumps will have two different forces. They will have the main force, that is the big clumps, and they will have a smaller force. So if I try to explain them, the way that the big clumps work, it's as the main driver, and the small clumps will be contained inside this small driver and they will have to follow the same structure of the big clumps. So uh, let's represent the small clumps with a cyan color. So my small clumps, we have a base rule that each big clump, the moment that we block them, they will have three to five times the number of big clumps, which means that per big clump we will have between three to five small clumps. So we will have three clumps in this case, one, two, and three. And that will be the base of how the small clumps work. So this will be one of the clumps this will be another, and this will be the third. So these clumps will have by themselves also different forces. As you can see here, they will follow different forces accordingly. So they have unique parameters as a clump, but they have a main driver that will be the big clump. But this shape can also be broken. So if we take this as, where is it? This one. As our main driver, then we can say that this main shape that we have here can also be broken inside. So my big clump, or my small clump, sorry, can have different forces that also affects them. And they can break the big clump given different shapes to them. I will try to explain how these forces are applied and how the big clumps can be broken a part of the profile. But to explain that, I will have to go back to the big clumps and to define what type of forces affect the actual clumps. But it's just good to know that the small clumps are small little forces or small little forces contained inside the big clump. We can have alien clumps that do not respect any of the shapes of the big clumps. But that comes when we remove the influence of one area of the big clump and then we will have a stray clump that does not follow any of the main forces of the big clump. But by rule of thumb, the clumps or the small clumps will be attracted by the big clumps. On certain cases, we will have a third clump system and these ones will be contained inside of the small clumps. And normally they are really tapered clumps and this just happens on really specific cases where the big clumps are too big or 
the small clumps are not that many. If we go to our cat's picture, and this one that we had here since the start, we can get a little bit closer to this, and we will see that certain cases on certain areas, like this one here, it's really hard because of the colors, but we can see this clump here, right? So this is one of our big clumps. But we can also see one, two, three, four, and five small clumps on that part. But if we go higher on the shape itself, we can see that at the root we have more. One, two, three, four, five, and then the small ones here. Which means that at this area, when we are on this higher level, we will have different configurations. And if we look at this, we said that this clump could potentially be flow. But if we define this as a clump, we have to define this as a small clump. And if we think of this as a small clump, then contained inside of this one, we will have many really, really small little clumps that are groups of almost one or two hairs that are doing something like this, that looks like it's just supporting the main shape and it's creating small little gaps and hollow areas inside of the clumps. So there are specific cases where we can actually find a third clump system but it's normally happening on really long hair. Another case where it can happen is on the lion's mane. So lion mane is a really complex structure that behaves at, from time to time as dreadlocks. Let me try to find a nice high res image so we can see and analyze a lion mane because they get quite dreadlocky. You can see it here. So here, we have one big defined clump, like that's one clump, there's no doubt. And then we can see another clump system here. So those will be our small clumps and they're quite big. Inside of them, we have a third clump system that will define the other clumps. So there are some specific cases on animals like, a, like the lions that they have really defined clumps and really defined manes that we can find these tight clump systems where they are really big and they have defined areas inside too. So that's good to know and that's something that we must be aware of when working on the clumps, that we can find a third clump system that will consist on one or two hairs that will define and they will be immersed inside of or clump system here or small clumps like this uh, let me see it wasn't this one that's the one so they will be contained here and our new system that will be the third clump system will be inside of them and they will behave as almost single hairs that break can break or can stay inside of the shape, but this can be the third clump system that is not that normal. And with this, I want to be super clear that usually three clump systems are more than enough even to really, really complex grooms. It's not that common to have a fourth clump system. That will be a really complex and hard to integrate groom that you normally don't need. So try to always stay with two clump systems as much as you can. And at the end, if you see that you need one more, you can try to go to the third clump system, but try to keep it as simple as possible. Thank you for following the lesson and see you in the next one.